Acute Light has been uh, derived from the need of customers to uh, tailor their own Acute build to low-end embedded hardware that they can minimize the size of their statically built applications usually and with it also the memory footprint of these applications and everything that comes with it, the startup time, etc. So for embedded devices, smaller binaries typically means better performance. So that was the main reason why we introduce the concept of Qt Lite. We see the graphical configuration tool here, but uh, first let's go to uh, the core of what constitutes Qt Lite, and that's the enabling and disabling of features that you can do on the command line. Um, this is what it would look like uh, in a, a pre-configured uh, Build directory. I've run configure here with a lot and lot of uh, features uh, disabled. Um, so it would look something like this: a, a giant list of command line options. You can see we've disabled all kinds of stuff, item views, item models, etc. Um, what we did here with this uh, with this feature list is we built Qt twice. Statically, once we used a, the default feature set, which you get when you don't disable anything manually, and the second time we build it with the feature set that you see here, oh, which is just a, a, a part, there's more, but uh, I don't think we need to show the entire list. It's a, a simple, cute, quick app showing an animation. Uh, relatively simple, but not entirely trivial. And we built this app against both of these uh, cute variants, the one with the default feature set and the one with the uh, features, uh, with the uh, large number of disabled features. And if we take a look at the sizes of the resulting application, the uh, default cute results in an application size of about 14 megabytes. And if we then compare that, to what we get when we build against the slimmer Qt, we see that the application size is a bit below 10 megabytes, so we've saved about 30% of binary size. And with it, uh, we will also get a slower memory footprint, possibly application startup, etc. Let's show the uh, graphical tool that we ship as part of the uh, Qt for device creation offering. Excuse me. <coughs> When you start up, you see the top-level feature tree here, and uh, this cute build that we have here. Uh, there's only three three repositories enabled, so you see a QML, Cute Base, and Cute Quick. Let's open the Cute Base one, and you see that it further um, the the next level are the modules in there. Core, GUI, network, etc. And if you expand further, you will arrive at the actual features. Uh, on the right hand side, you get additional information such as uh, which JSON file it is uh, defined in, uh, what its purpose is, if it is documented, and uh, stuff like what are required features, what are conflicting features. If we look for a feature that has actually competing implementation. For instance, internationalization can be provided by the icon library as well as ICU. So we see icon here. And on the right hand side, we can see that ICU is listed as a conflicting feature. So one is enabled by default, the other one is disabled. Um, if we, sorry, on the command line it could happen that you mistakenly enable both and then configure at the end of its run uh, will tell you that you've made a mistake, which is nice. The tool even prevents you from that happening because uh, in addition to, to simply telling you this as an information, you can also see that 
if you were to enable ICU, it automatically, automatically disables the competing feature icon. So the feature set that you write out when you store your finished configuration uh, cannot uh, have such conflicts that will lead to a configure error. So internal consistency um, is taken care of by this tool. Enabling required features work the same way. Let's see if we find one. Like Q event transition has uh, a requirement of state machine. If we go to state machine. And we disable it, then the event transition will be disabled as well. And vice versa, if we enable Q event transition, then a state machine will also be enabled. So this kind of thing is also taken care of by, by this tool. This is Qt Lite. It's available from Qt 5.8 onwards. Um, try it out.